pop quiz. Ready? Which of these is not like the others? A. Varsity cross country captain. B. AP scholar. C. Three year speech participant. D. Winter formal queen. E. Independent fundraiser for the global water crisis. Mental, mental break. Okay, I know all of you who have taken a multiple choice test before know that typically these sorts of questions don't list past E, but this is my favorite part of the speech, so I have just a few more, I promise. Anyways, F, National Honor Society President. G, Class of 2014 High School Valedictorian. H, Clinical Depressant. Okay, obviously letter H is not like the others. And yet, just like my love of running, my dedication to academics, and my passion for speaking, my depressive disorder is an important part of who I am. This is the first and probably the only time I will put it on my resume, but it is important to me that all of you understand that mental illnesses are not just my problem, they're our problem. And in order to become part of the solution, we need to understand several things. First, mental illnesses are real medical conditions. Second, they are more common than you think. And finally, our prejudices toward the mentally ill can have irreversible results. Mental illnesses are real, and they have very serious medical implications. In order to truly understand most mental illnesses, we need to take a closer look at something called the central nervous system, otherwise known as the CNS. Now bear with me, things are going to get a bit scientific for just a moment, but don't worry, I'm thinking more Bill Nye the science guy, not Albert Einstein. The CNS is comprised of the brain and the spinal cord, and among other things, it helps us to control our emotions. When the brain senses that we should be feeling a particular way, it sends the signal down the line of neurons on our spinal cord. Now, in mentally healthy people, this signal gets transmitted throughout the entire body without any hiccups. But in the body of someone who is mentally ill, the same signal can get tripped up along the way. It all has to do with these little, tiny things called neurotransmitters, <coughs> which happen to play a big role in helping that signal get from one neuron to the next. And in the bodies of many mentally ill people, these neurotransmitters are found to be out of balance. This means that when the brain is trying to convey a feeling to the rest of the body, sometimes the body never quite gets the message. Things get sort of confused or jumbled up, just like they would in a computer if a few wires were missing. And here's the thing. Is this really so different from a physical illness? A diabetic suffers from a deficiency of insulin just like a depressant suffers from a deficiency of serotonin. Diabetic, depressant, same idea. Seizures of an epileptic are caused by abnormal bursts of electricity in the brain, just like behavior, often associated with schizophrenia, is caused by abnormal amounts of those same neurotransmitters. We would never look over to an epileptic and say, tough enough, none of us would ever turn to a diabetic and say, you're so dramatic. The sooner we understand and respect the validity of these illnesses, the sooner we can become part of the solution. This is important because these illnesses are common, maybe much more common than you think. Pop quiz number two. What percentage of Americans has a mental illness? Is it A, 5%, B, 10%, C, 15%, or D, 25%? If you answer D, you are correct. According to the National Institute for Mental Health, over one in four Americans suffers from a diagnosable mental health disorder during any given year. That's over 50 million people in the United States alone. If you do the math, that means that it's likely that a member of your immediate family, several of your friends, and a handful of your colleagues or coworkers will likely at some point suffer from a medical condition 
that is outside of their control. What's more, the symptoms of these illnesses are not always easily recognizable. You can't always tell that a person is suffering from a mental health disorder, even if it's somebody close to you. Although our society has been conditioned to believe that the mentally ill look and act a certain way, the fact is, often the person you would least expect to have a mental illness does. Stereotypes about mental illnesses are hurtful, and they keep people from getting the help that they need and deserve. With so many people impacted by these disorders, it is time that we take responsibility to educate ourselves about the realities of mental illness. True or false question. The mentally ill are violent. If you answer false, you are correct. This is very tricky territory here. We've all read about terrible, horrific tragedies, grisly crimes committed by mentally disabled people. And while it is true that the incidence of violence among the mentally ill is somewhat higher than among those not handicapped, what is important to remember is that the incidence of violence among the mentally ill is rare, and those ill who do commit acts of violence are typically struggling with one or more other stressors, like substance abuse, a history of abuse, loss of a spouse or a home, or juvenile detention. In fact, the mentally ill are far more likely to be victims of violence rather than to inflict it. They need our help, but instead they are getting our cold shoulder. According to a public report on mental health done by Columbia University, 40% of Americans would choose not to be friends with a person having a mental illness. Even worse, 64% of Americans would not want to work with someone like me. 70% of Americans would not want a depressant to marry into their family. These statistics are unfair. They are discriminatory, and they compound the already difficult challenges that the mentally ill face every day. I am a runner. I am a student, and I am a speaker. But I'm also a depressant. I have a chemical deficiency in my central nervous system. I am among the fortunate who have adequate support and treatment. But there are many people just like me who are not receiving the help that they need and as a result are unreasonably stigmatized. It is time that we stop ostracizing people for conditions that they did not choose for actions that we have not tried to understand, and for burdens heavy with the weight of prejudice. Because in reality, mental illnesses are not just A, real medical conditions, or B, more common than you think, or C, unreasonably stigmatized. They are D, all of the above. Thank you.